Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's been a hot minute since we had a loud and bubbly video. Um, today I am going to be showing you an aquarium I just set up in order to experiment with breeding those new wild betta mahachiensis that I got in. This is a unique species because they're actually a hard water betta that are often uh, collected out of brackish waters. So they don't require the same typical super black water or super soft water um, that a lot of the wild bettas have a reputation for needing. Now the ones that I have are F1s, meaning filial generation one, meaning their parents were wild fish and these were the first generation born in captivity. And they were bred and raised in fresh water, so that is currently how the aquarium set up. Now, I have it scaped uh, right now as a singular tank, but you'll notice there are two filters within the aquarium, and that's because I plan to divide it. When breeding fish, um, often more space doesn't always help your efforts. So because my aquarium is a 20 long, I'm going to be dividing it in half and putting a pair on either side, and each half of the aquarium will have its own filter for aeration. Um, but they'll be set up very differently. The left side of the aquarium is a Siriu stone scape, and that Siriu stone was chosen because it hardens the water a bit. Um, the gravel in this aquarium is an inert uh, lava made by Oliver Knott um, that I picked up quite a while ago and have just never used, so I wanted to try it out. Uh, these are a bubble nesting species, so I'm putting plants up into the, to the top of the water column, but I'm also providing a fair amount of cover. Now on the right side of the aquarium, it's set up with a bunch of botanicals and just some plants. Um, and this is because as botanicals break down, they provide food for fry. So I just wanted to show the options of two different types of setups that you could do in order to breed these fish. Now I went online and there are certainly any number of ways that you can DIY tank dividers from light diffuser to latch hook mesh uh, to buying um, acrylic and drilling it, but in my experience there is nothing quite more frustrating than having a divider that we've DIY'd fall over or allow the fish to mix. So I decided to go online and purchase one and I found one that's made by a YouTuber, uh, Life With Pets, and it's a 20 gallon long divider. It was about $15. It's shipped extremely quickly. Um, it's made of this nice plastic. Uh, no tools are required to install it, though you do have to utilize substrate. It has some little clips. So I thought that today uh, we would install this. Now, she had no idea I was going to be making this video. This is not sponsored. I'm not... It, there's no, like, collaboration here. I simply like the look of her dividers um, when I was Googling for dividers that I could purchase. And I also like the idea of supporting uh, another woman in the hobby. So we're going to give it a try, and I'll give you an honest review. And then we'll move some fish over, and hopefully they'll get to breeding because they're already bubble nesting in their quarantine. Let's get to work. I'm just moving. This is going to make the tank pretty dusty, but because um, I didn't rinse the substrate as the instructions called for, because I just I never do. Um, I just fill slowly, so there's a fair amount of red dust. I'm just creating a path in the substrate to place the divider, and you'll notice that it's not a even um, division of space within this aquarium because of the rocks I chose, but I don't think it'll really matter um, as they are sharing total volume. Then you slide These, uh, there's like tracks you slide up and it holds it in place and then it comes with some clips that you place on the trim on either side of the divider to hold it in place so now we have two separate aquariums now of course because they're sharing total volume um, 
and water parameters you would want to quarantine if you know quarantine thoroughly before adding fish from different sources but I'm going to be adding the exact same fish and what I like about this design uh, you can get it with holes or without I got it with to allow for flow from one side to the other but it is dark um, it is completely opaque so the fish won't be able to see each other which is really nice and then those are the clips on either side of the divider fit over the trim um, in order to hold this securely in place. Now, because there's no way to clip at the bottom, you do need to use substrate um, or some piece of decor so that it can't be pushed out of the way, but it's, it's in there pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple pairs of the fish to move into this aquarium. Now I've grabbed two pairs here. I'm going to drop them into their aquariums and we'll take a look. There's one of the males that I chose. He's clearly not very happy. Uh, this is on the botanical side of the aquarium. The female is hiding, not to be, or not at all shocking. Um, and then over on this side, both fish are currently hiding. Um, I have put a lid on this aquarium. I do have the water level, level drops just a tiny bit. I may increase that. Um, it's going to take these guys a little bit of time to settle into their new digs. And then I will start conditioning them with frozen or live foods. But the hope is that we can see some interesting breeding behavior out of these guys in order to get a really thorough species spotlight for the future. So if you're interested in content like this and content like that, please make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on as I will be doing a formal species spotlight on these guys and continuing to track the progress of these guys in their new aquariums. As always, thank you for your continued support. I also wanted to share with you guys that the Sewellia spawned again in quarantine. You can see there's some really tiny little babies um, and that's really exciting to me because I've only ever spawned these guys before uh, using like river rocks and stuff like that so to be able to use these pleco caves uh, and get them to spawn like this is super exciting um, I'm gonna be working on hopefully some sort of affiliate program to be able to get you guys a discount for the various caves that I use at least if you're in North America um, so I also want to do a species spotlight on these guys. I need to spend some time filming them. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know down in the comments. And then as you can see, I have all the lighting done in the fish room. It was all supplied by Current USA. Um, I have four or so different types of lighting. We have the um, True Lumens, which are these dudes. We have some Serene lighting which is a strip light here. I have that on the Shelly tank and the Oscar tank. And then I have their LED backlighting on the Blacktail Killers Aquarium. Um, I use the True Lumens as well on my rack of breeders. And then over here we have uh, a new light they're coming out with. I'll be sure to give you details as I have it. And then up top, uh, my husband and I mounted uh, hanging true lumens. Uh, there's three of them in a row in order to light this adequately. Um, so I'm really stoked and if you guys want more details on that just let me know. Um, still fine tuning some things but once it's all complete I'm sure we'll do an in-depth video. So this is what an Oscar looks like when it's on full blown pout. Um, Captain is totally fine but pretending to be dead and as you can see He's watching me because he's angry that I have been changing all the lighting and stomping around down here. So large cichlids can have quite the personality. Um, I come down and I see him like this and I get totally freaked out. But you can see he's literally looking at me. And if I get out food, he'll be back to normal.
I'll show you. Oh, food? What? Oh, okay, I'm totally fine. Let me just go eat some food. I'm not dead, I promise. Sorry, Mom.